Today's episode is sponsored by you, my Patreon subscribers. Join the family by visiting patreon.com forward slash Nalini Tranquim. What do you mean trauma is manifested in the body? Loss of appetite, lack of sleep. Every doctor did like every test. They, you're totally fine, you're healthy. And I'm like, there's no, there's something wrong, wrong with, with my body. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm Nalini Tranquil. I have the privilege of interviewing an incredible woman today, Jennifer Adams. She's an associate marriage and family therapist, and she specializes specifically in the field of trauma healing. We are going to be talking about trauma, the effects of trauma on our bodies, not only mentally and emotionally, but physically as well. She's going to share with us some of the not so obvious signs, how to identify it, what to do, and how to get help. So let's get into it. Jennifer, thank you so much for agreeing to come on my little show. I'm excited. Thank uh, you. It is so I good love, to have I love you. meeting people virtually and, and just being able to share expertise back and forth. I is know. Awesome. It's absolutely incredible. Now, you are an associate marriage and family therapist who specializes yes. in trauma healing. Mm-hmm. That is incredible. But there was one particular line in your biography, which I'm just going to read. It really captured my Mm -hmm. attention. It says that it was your healing and recovery from your own childhood trauma that has actually sparked the desire in you to help others be free. I love that. And I want to know more. (laughs) Tell me more. Yes. Um, (laughs) So it's kind of funny to kind of go back uh, a little bit. I actually used to be a journalism major in college. Um, I always was a book nerd, reading and writing. I am still such a book nerd. I'm like always buying books. Now this time it's related to human behavior. But before then, I just remember reading was always my escape. Um, Mm -hmm. And my childhood home, um, I basically grew up in a home that had a lot of domestic violence. So nice, my nice. dad would beat my mom a lot. Cops were called. Um, a lot of addiction uh, happened with him with alcohol. Um, and just like a lot of different dynamics, like my parents are both not perfect and they both have their issues, but now I can say that, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> but living yeah. in that kind of environment um, is very scary. Your yeah. home life is not safe. And so when I was in college, Um, I, you know, was living at home and then I was going to college for journalism, but (laughs) in high school, I actually did a lot of, uh, journalism classes and I was, by the time I graduated, uh, high school, I was assistant editor of the school newspaper. Then after I graduated, I just did local magazines and like little, little like local stuff. Would you say that writing was like an escape for you as a child? Oh my God. Yes. I was also obsessed with like Sailor Moon and like Dragon Ball Z and like Rug Rats and stuff. So in my childhood home back in Florida, I'm pretty sure somewhere in my room are still notebooks where I wrote like full on episodes for Sailor Moon. And I remember reading them. I remember reading them years later and being like, oh my God, I should have like you know, emailed them and it was like a movie and then I wrote yeah. chapters. And oh my God. So writing was such an escape for me. It still is. Writing and reading is such a good escape because like Harry Potter came out, yeah. you know? And yeah. so that was always this kind of like, you're transported into a different, Completely um, different world. reality. So, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so, I mean, growing up in that kind of home, Oh my God, I was always reading and writing and, and, um, I was very involved. I was right across the school walking wise to, um, my high school. And so I was involved in a lot of clubs and a lot of sports mainly, honestly, because yes, I loved people. I loved being active, but also because I didn't want to go home. Didn't want to go, you know, um, I I didn't want to go home. I didn't feel safe there. And I knew that like sports were just that good release Um, and also I was able to just kind of be me and have that creative outlet. So your journalistic teacher really Mm -hmm. spurred you on in the writing. Oh yeah. He, he started right reading, you know, they, they read your work, you know, as a teacher and he just said, you have a gift for writing. And I was like, by the time I started my college journey, I knew I wanted to do something in journalism and helping people, but I didn't know what at that point. 
Okay. So, so how mm-hmm. did it kind of morph? I ended up taking a um, intro to psychology class okay. and the teacher, she was fantastic. She just really made things come alive. And then going through the childhood stuff, now I understand that what I had was a lot of anxiety and depression. Um, I had a lot of, um, I had a few suicidal attempts and um, cutting history. Uh. And um, once I kind of began that journey, even in my bachelor's degree, you learn these classes of, of intro to counseling and um, what addiction looks like and, and just so many different, you know, class subjects that you go through. And I just remember being like, whoa, whoa. and yeah. starting to understand so much of why my parents did what they did, you know, Absolutely. all these different like little, there's so many different factors when it comes to psychology. And I just remember always being challenged. Now I'm a full-time trauma therapist at a community mental health center here in Los Angeles. Wow. Um, and how I got into trauma is not only, um, you know, my own childhood trauma, but then there's been a lot of like different losses in my life. Like for instance, um, not a lot of death, but a lot of different losses that really meant a lot. Like, um, when my depression got really bad in college, I actually got kicked out of school for a low GPA. Um, and I was halfway done with my bachelor's degree. And I remember trying to fight the college. I remember, having my therapist write a letter. I remember being like, and they're like, oh, well, your your GPA was dropping for so many months. Like we can't oh, let you continue. Man. And I'm like, I'm literally showing you I'm on medication. I'm, I'm doing therapy and like, you can't like let me in or start over. And they're like, no, I was like, I want to say three or four classes left of my bachelor's degree. No. Oh, yeah. And God. I remember being like, oh my What's God, what fun? am I going to do? Like yeah. what? what school is going to like accept somebody with a below a 2.0 GPA. Right. What, like what? And I had lost a scholarship at that time. And so I was like, oh my God. And I just remember thinking at the time, like, great, like my career is over. And it's just yeah. because I'm trying to address like a depression. And what ended up happening is I found a university called St. Leo University. Um, and it was all online at that point. And I remember talking to them on the phone and they, they had me like transfer everything and like, you know, see if I could apply to the school and they had counseling. So I wanted to get my bachelor's in counseling um, or in psychology. And so they were like, Oh, by the way, like your credits all transfer. And I was like, Oh my God. Wow. And I was like, yeah, but what about my GPA? And they're like, no, when you start with us, your GPA starts over. <laughs> that is fantastic. Like, talk about God ordained, right? Yeah, like, talk wow. about God ordained. Yeah, um, and then I took a class in my master's degree program about trauma huh. um, and traumatic stress and how it like presents itself in the body. And I just remember going, oh my God. Mm. Oh my God. What do you mean trauma is manifested in the body? Like I started realizing I was having IBS problems in my 20s, Uh, later 20s into my 30s. I also, when I hit the age of 30, I'm 33 now, but when I hit the age of 30, I went through a really scary, scary point in my life where I hit 30 and all of a sudden I started experiencing random symptoms. So I was experiencing dry heaving every morning. Mm. I was experiencing lack of appetite. And if you know me, I love food. That's why I got hers. I okay. love food, especially wow. Mexican and Italian. Loss of appetite, lack of sleep. Um, I was losing a little bit of weight. I kept feeling very nauseous all day long. Um, and, you know, at first I'm thinking, it's anxiety, blah, blah, blah. My job hadn't changed. My eating habits hadn't changed. I was very confused. Yeah. And I kept feeling like the more I, like, stood up, the more I would feel, like, lightheaded, and I'd feel like I was going to pass out. And I was living at a roommate at the time. And she's like, there's something wrong. Like there's there's something wrong. I was in and out of ERs. Every doctor did like every test. They did even a a, a colonoscopy, everything. Um, Because I would say, oh, I'd have pain before I'd make a bowel movement. And the doctors were like, they do a bunch of tests. And they're like, you're totally fine. You're healthy. And I'm like, no, there's something wrong wrong with my body. I started getting really scared. And I started like crying. I thought I had something chronic that no doctor was finding out. So I'm like, Oh my God, shit. Like I want to get married. I want to have kids one day. Like, of course. And so I kept feeling like my body was telling me there's something wrong. There's something wrong. 
So I go tell all this to my therapist and I'm still the same therapist I see today. And she's like, hmm, well, we know you have anxiety and and depression. And and I know one of the most uncommon symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder is dry heaving and like kind of nausea, stomach issues. And I was like, yeah, but like, why is it showing up now? Yeah. Yeah. Like if I've had this since I was before eighth grade to now, like why is this showing up? Well, she ended up going to a conference, my therapist did, and she came back and she's like, I think I know what's going on with your body. And I was like, what's, what's going on? She's like, so there's this book called The Body Keeps the Score. And I said, okay, what's it about? And she goes, it talks about how later on in life, we've talked about a lot of traumatic experiences that you've processed, but your body might be starting to try to let that go. Um, and, and having the physical manifestations come up and not being able to get released, your body is going through all these issues. So I was like, huh. And I researched more into it. I bought the book, I read it. And I was like, oh my God, this makes sense. This makes sense. Because I had at that point had been processing a lot of stuff mentally, mentally, but I physically was not, I, I didn't know how to walk through trauma. Like I didn't know how to physically let go of trauma. And thankfully, she started doing EMDR work with me, um, which is eye movement desensitization. And what it is, is it's a lot of like tapping into the somatic, which is the physical responses that when you're like talking about a traumatic event or a situation that really like upset you, your body physically shows up. So people can feel this in like hotness. Um, Some people can get really nauseous if they're talking about a traumatic experience, that kind of thing. So we started doing that kind of work. And my body like stopped having the symptoms and I was like, like they slowly started going away. And I'm like, hold on. We got all these medical doctors and no one's asking me, have you been through trauma? Have you, you know, no one's asking me these things. And then I started doing more research on how your body changes every, you know, so often. And it was saying that in your twenties, late twenties, early thirties, that your body shifts into this whole new set of like, Hmm. you know, mechanisms and chemicals and stuff like that. So sometimes it throws off, you know, like your physical body or your mental health. And I go, that's why I hit my thirties, not my twenties when, you know, you're living furry and you're, you know, doing everything. So because of that happening to me and reading the book, the body keeps the score that immediately sparked, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like if, and I was already starting to see clients at this time. And so I was like, hold on. A lot of my clients have been through trauma. Let me find out if this is showing up in their body too. Yeah. (gasps) More than you would have thought. Oh my God. Mm. Every client that I talked to reported it. And one of, one of the first clients that I started practicing trauma work on, um, you know, I did let them know, I was like, I'm not trained in it at the moment, but I've been finding a lot of research on this. And this is the client who had a lot of trauma. And I remember like praying before the session and just kind of like trying to get attuned because I can feel a lot of like energy in the room a lot. Um, when you're an empathetic person, you can kind of feel like something's off yeah. in the room sometimes, whether somebody like needs some support or somebody's yeah. narcissistic or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I remember asking him in the session, I was like, I know this is going to sound really crazy, but are you feeling any pain in your stomach? Oh, wow. Because... For two or three sessions, every time before I would meet him, I would physically not feel well. Wow. And I remember being like, all right, am I like, am I crazy? Like, (laughs) I know I got anxiety and depression, but like, (laughs) wow. And I remember texting my therapist and I'm like, okay, there's something here because I only feel this with this client right before I see him. What? What? So I just randomly asked him one day, I was like, are you, are you randomly feeling like, pain in your stomach. I know it sounds kind of weird. Like, do you have any bowel issues or, and he goes, Oh my God. Yes. I've been having lower back pain and like stomach issues for like weeks now. And we started talking that opened the door. And I said, I know this might sound crazy, but I just read this book called the body keeps the whole keeps the score. And I was just kind of wondering, like, I know we've talked about some things, but you know, with your traumatic experiences that you've shared and he hadn't shared a lot at that point. I said, do you feel like it physically manifests? And he's like, yeah. Um, anytime I talk about it, I'll feel pain in my arm from when, you know, his mother hit him. And I'm just like, yeah. Wow. Why are we only focusing on yeah. like, 
depression and anxiety depression and just talking anxiety. about things and not exactly not physically letting go or spiritually letting go. Yeah. And so I remember just starting there and um, I would test out things with certain clients. Like when we would talk about a memory now, I, now I do it to a, to a T, but if a client starts talking to me about a traumatic memory, I ask them, where do you feel in your body? Hmm. And they'll tell me like a lot of people will say throat. And the more research that I've done on that is when you're talking about a traumatic event and you feel like your throat is like closing or you feel like you can't really talk or that kind of thing. I asked my clients, I said, did you feel like you didn't have a voice in that traumatic memory? Oh gosh, I've got goosebumps. <laughs> and they lost it. Yeah, and I remember yeah. being in the session, just feeling very led, like not only by the spirit, but just feeling led in, in my training and my own personal experiences and being like, holy crap. Like, yeah. why are more therapists not doing this? That's right. Like, what? Like, yeah. and then if my clients were spiritual, I'd ask them, you know, if past abuse, like say they had a past abuse from a parent, does it affect how they look at God? And it would. 100%. Absolutely. So that started, I mean, honestly, testing some things out in the beginning. Once I learned about trauma, I was just like, we need to be talking about we this. We need to be talking about this. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. And you hit the nail on the head. People who have like really struggled in their relationship with their earthly father struggle to connect with their heavenly father. Yeah. You no, know, it's yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, this is so great that you're able to start bringing this to the table, you know, and that these are issues yeah. we're addressing. Yeah, a lot of therapists, you know, um, a lot of them are starting to address physical symptoms and that kind of thing. But I don't find a lot of therapists doing all three, like incorporating all three, you know, mind, body and spirit. Right. Um, And even if somebody says they're not spiritual, well, even the essence of how you feel about yourself or the afterlife or whatever, that's still technically a spiritual topic. So some clients don't don't need to go there. But other clients, like when I've talked about all three their symptoms decrease. Um, when I'm walking some of my clients through some of the roughest stuff I've ever heard in my entire life, um, all physically feel it sometimes. Mm. And thankfully this is why I go to my own therapist. I do my own self care. Um, otherwise it's, it's very intense to hold that kind of energy in a room. Uh, and so thankfully, um, I've been able to still learn and, and still do this. And I praise my clients all the time because to tell a complete stranger, even oh. if we've been working together for a year or two years, absolutely, absolutely, to tell a complete stranger, really traumatic events. Yes. Yes. Is, is not only really scary and vulnerable. And I highlight that for them, but also I tell them, I'm like, it also gives you a sense of power when you had powerlessness absolutely. in that moment. Absolutely. absolutely. And it's the only way to heal, you yeah. know, is having somebody in your corner that you can trust, that you can yeah. actually just start to let all of this out because otherwise, of course, it's going to manifest. I mean, now hearing it back, it's like, this yeah. just makes sense now. Of course, yeah. the body can't contain it, right? Forever. Mm-hmm. It's, Whenever it's, we're like super stressed out, people know that like their immune system gets lower. Oh, why are you sick with the cold all of a sudden? Mm, you know, yeah. and and so it's kind of interesting to to put all of that together. And that's yeah. why when I have a new client, I, I tell them, you know, I'm not specifically trained in trauma healing yet. I have to pay for that. Um, and it's like two grand. <laughs> um yeah. But other than that, it's like, I can say, this is what I've done with clients. This is how I walk you through it. And um, Hmm. it's been interesting because some of them are like, I've gone to a lot of therapists that are older than you or younger than you. And they've never asked me about how I physically, like when I'm talking about my experience, like if I physically feel it Hmm. and I'm like, Hmm. Yeah. And then I would ask, you know, if their medical doctors have, have ever asked or screened for it or anything, because the more research I'm even doing with my PhD is that there isn't, there's some tools that can be used, but a lot of what I'm advocating for now is that we need doctors and yeah. mental health clinicians Absolutely. and the community as a whole to treat trauma as a collective mental health issue, because yeah. the more traumatic experiences that are happening, and we can't prevent those from happening, unfortunately, but you can help with the healing process and a lot Absolutely. of 
the medical doctors that I've even been to in, in the past try to give you pills and just yeah, absolutely. Let's shut just up. put a band-aid like, on it. Yes. Yeah. It's a band-aid. And then unfortunately, you know, people like my mom or uh, other people I know, then they get so dependent on these medications yeah. that later on when they've been on them for 10, 20, 30 right. years, um, they start having physical issues. They exactly. can't go off of them. Exactly. Um, and so a lot of what I believe in is like, yes, if you need medication, go for it. I've taken antidepressants. I've taken anti-anxiety yeah. pills before. Yeah. No shame in that. Absolutely. But also we have to address what's Deal going on. Deal with the root issue. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it was the same with me. 2019 was probably the worst year of my life. And I ended up diagnosed with um, PTSD and mm. ended up on meds just to help me sleep because I just, I could not sleep. And yeah. At the same time as taking the medication, I was in and out of my psychologist's office, you know, so it wasn't like I was just taking the medication to help me sleep, you know, mm-hmm. and then had this feel for the rest of the day. I was dealing with the root cause of the sleeplessness. So yeah. what do you say to the person who's listening to this conversation now and is mm-hmm. suddenly identifying that some of the issues that they're experiencing with their own physical bodies right now could very well be mm-hmm. the manifestation of, you know, trauma on the inside of them? What would be your first point of call for them? Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously I'm not a doctor. So my first thing, like when I uh, have a new client, right. And we're talking about things and they start telling me some health problems. The first thing I do recommend is go to a doctor and just rule out things. Yeah. Um, just get, you know, blood work done, get, Absolutely. you know, if you feel like it, an MRI, just rule out those things. Um, because we want to make sure, um, I even do this with my clients. I ask them, when's the last time you had a doctor's appointment? Um, because the body could manifest things physically, like actually physically, where you might need to address it. Um, or you need to go see a therapist. And one of the most, one of the things that I really advocate for the most is that get support, you know, um, there are so many resources now out there to help you get through your trauma. If you're too scared to go to a therapist, there are support groups out there, Um, there are even Facebook groups that are incredible. Um, there's countless books out there. If you're interested, um, obviously if it's a life and death situation, please go to the ER. Um, there's also safe spaces and safe hotlines that you can call. Um, Mm -hmm. if you feel like, you know, you're a little too scared. Um, and then as far as if somebody's worried about, uh, suicidal thoughts, which, which happen a lot with people with trauma, um, or any kind of like abuse, whether it's mental, physical, sexual, um, there's a difference between the suicidal thought that I just want the pain to stop and I just want to die. There's, there's two different things. And a lot of people get that confused. They think it's just attention. Or if they hear their friends say, Oh, I have suicidal thoughts several times. They sometimes get desensitized to it. Meaning they're like, Oh, they're just seeking attention or, oh, they're not serious. Take it serious every time. Absolutely. Take it serious every time. Thankfully, my friends took it serious mm. the the times that I was going through and they saved my lives mm. because there was two times I was literally going to the location to do something <sighs> and they saved my life. So they picked me up, that kind of thing. And because of that, it kind of normalized like, hey, what I'm going through like, is okay. Like, it's okay that I'm having these thoughts, but mine was more, I wanted the pain to stop. So when it comes to that, people get afraid that if they go to the hospital, they'll get, um, you know, admitted. Now the hospitals usually only admit you if you say you really feel like you're a danger to self, you know, or others, which if you need to get it done, like I know friends that have had to go into the psych hospitals and there's no shame in that, you know? Um, so know that there's no shame in that, but more than anything, don't do it alone Absolutely, because a lot of trauma, you know, survivors, there's a lot of guilt and shame that they go through. There's a lot of blame that could possibly be passed down religiously or culturally yeah. even. Yeah. Um, and I would just say, find someone you trust, but be careful who you trust. Yes, um, absolutely. Because I remember there was a girlfriend of mine who, um, at the time that I was going through a lot of stuff at home, she sat there and, um, I called her up and I said, I'm not doing well. Um, 
you know, I, I really want to end my life. And she said the worst thing, the worst thing that you can say to somebody who's suicidal. She literally told me on the phone, wow, you're the most selfish person I know. Um, you didn't serve in the war. Like you're not missing an arm or a leg or anything like serious to be like worried about. You have a job, you have school. And I was like, no, I just got kicked out of like my job in school because of what's going on. Like mentally I'm not okay. And I remember being like, wow. Oh, that's devastating. Like I was so heartbroken because I just remember looking at the phone and being like, geez, Mm. should I do this? Like what the, but then I remember being like, I've known her for four, five, six years. Yeah. You're going to literally say I'm a selfish person. You you literally don't know who I am. Cause I am like one of the most least selfish person. Yeah. What? Yeah. And thankfully I made the smart decision of hanging up and calling a different friend. And that friend had a response of get the heck over here. We'll get a bunch of food and ice cream. And (laughs) and (laughs) yeah, that friend was solid. And she, she is one of the friends that saved my life um, Mm. in in this instance, because she, she called, she, I went over there. I cried my eyes out. I told her about everything that was going on and she just held me. Mm. And she's like, I'm so sorry. And like, Imagine if I would have listened to the other friend yeah, absolutely. versus the other one. I probably wouldn't be here. So be very and mindful. So be of careful. Who, yes, be very mindful of who you allow to speak into your life. Yeah, because some people, trauma's thrown around a lot mm. um, sometimes. And sometimes people just say, oh, well, everybody's had traumatic experiences. Okay, but that doesn't mean it's okay. No, that's right. That doesn't exactly. mean that they don't need help. That's right. Um, and so... I just say be be careful. It's also like um, pain threshold, you know. I think it's the same when it comes to trauma. Is like the same way with a physical injury. Like say you touch mm-hmm. a hot plate or something. Maybe for one person, yeah. their pain threshold are okay with that. Whereas for mm-hmm. another, that could be horrifically traumatic. Well, I think yep. it's exactly the same with mental health and wellness. One mm-hmm. traumatic experience for one person isn't necessarily traumatic for somebody else. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think also just being that much more sensitive and aware mm-hmm. of the needs of our loved ones. Yeah. And I've seen, I'm also really a big advocate for this too. The The church does uh, a lot of harm when it comes to mental health, sometimes I've had yeah. friends, I've had friends have family members and church pastors mm. and prominent leaders tell them they should not be on medication and that they should just trust God for anything yes. um, and trust God to get rid of their anxiety. Yes. Um, yes. When I I've, went I've, had did, that. I've had that yep. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that honestly pisses me off. <laughs> yeah. One of my biggest pet peeves. Yeah. Um, and even when, I went through my own like divorce in that time when I was really praying and seeking God for like separation and divorce. I went to, you know, my, my one church had moved. So like my church move had my church home had moved. And so I didn't have, you know, a place that, you know, friends kind of went with that too. So I had some friends, but not like a church group. So I remember going to groups, you know, and going to different churches and checking it out and just asking for prayer because I'm thinking separation or divorce. And I really feel like God's telling me divorce for my protection. Mm -hmm. And I still to this day, am so flabbergasted with the responses I would get. The responses would be, and I would tell them that he's being verbally abusive, that my life is being put, you know, at risk every night, that you know, there's different situations where he started getting like aggressive and it was only a matter of time before it turned physical because I grew up in that. I know when it's going to happen. You can identify it. Yeah, exactly. And I got a lot of shame from a lot of people. They would say, oh, well, you're a therapist. You should know all the warning signs. Excuse Mm. me. I can be the most amazing therapist in the world, which I'm, no one is, but you can be a great therapist and people not show their true colors until years later, which he didn't show his true colors until a year after we were married. Yeah. Wow. And that was like two years of almost dating. So it's oh. like, and he didn't show any of that until I got my job as a therapist, you know, working full time at that time I had gotten my dream job, basically at the dream mm-hmm. company that I wanted to work for at the time. And I think that just kind of threw a lot of his own trauma that he had to deal with. And I remember going to these churches and crying and fearing for my life, basically. And I remember them being like, oh, well, honey, you should go home and just put on worship music. You're not praying hard enough. Oh my gosh, Jennifer. 
And I'm like, uh, are, are you serious? Yeah. Oh, and then they would also say things like, I didn't have enough faith that God could come into my marriage. Yeah. And here all the while I'm saying, th- I'm saying, yeah, I'm sorry, which Bible you reading? Cause uh, nowhere do I see in my Bible that Jesus forces himself on anyone. Yeah, absolutely. He led by example and then people followed and da da da. I'm sorry, but if your partner doesn't want to let God in, then it can't be forced. Exactly. There's only so much you can do. Absolutely. absolutely. And I just remember feeling so defeated oh. because here I am trying to protect myself and the church is making me feel like I'm this horrible wife and that right. I just need to stay with them. Right. And unfortunately, that's what happens. Yes. Churches, culturally, yeah, happens. Yeah, unfortunately, the same way there's some people that um, don't agree that there is the spirit realm or that mm-hmm. there is any part of spirit within us, you know, the fact that we made mm-hmm. physical, mental, emotional, and spirit. Mm-hmm. It's almost as if there are some churches or some church leaders or, or congregational members who don't believe that we're physical, mental, and emotional beings. We're only spiritual, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And so for them, yep. go and pray about it, go and seek God about it, go and, you know, put worship music on about it. No, mm-hmm. hang on a second. We also need to take care of our physical beings, our mental yep. and emotional beings. I mean, for many, many years, it was mm-hmm. frowned upon um, in you know my circle of influence to see a psychologist. If yep. it wasn't for my psychologist last year, I would not have made it. Yes, of course. Yep. I, you know, I absolutely, definitely acknowledge the, my loved ones and, you know, my church friends and those who were yeah. praying for me and, and seeking God on my behalf. But if it wasn't for me sitting down with my psychologist mm-hmm. and nutting out the trauma, yeah, I would not be here today. Same. My my therapist is a Christian as well. And oh, this is why I pay her because she, <laughs> she'll call me out on my crap. And I'm just like, we all need you know people me for like, like that. We all need people like, like you've that. You've known me for like five or six years. Like you're the longest <laughs> relationship I've had. And I'm okay with that. Saying that. <laughs> I am very okay with saying that's oh the longest relationship I've had. I've had one relationship was four, but I'm like, my therapist is at like seven now. So <laughs> we're at the seven year mark. And I'm like, God bless you because she's had to deal with a lot of stuff. And I think you know, obviously faith and culture plays a really big aspect in yeah. how we attach to others. And if yeah. we, if we can create that safety and I think it, it's so different for everyone that's gone through a traumatic experience. So I always tell people, find out what works for you. Don't Absolutely. just take my advice, Absolutely. look into things. I can send you resources. I can send you research. You find out what's calling to you. What, what speaks to you? Like when you're reading a book or hearing a song, like what's, what's speaking to you? Like, Agreed. you know, some people totally don't like agree. one-on-one therapy. So yeah. I'm like, okay, there's group, you know? And so yeah. we go back to that and it, it just depends, but more than anything, you know, if you're, if you're spiritual and, or if you're Christian or anything like that, I don't think any God would want you to fear for your life. Absolutely. And, you know, I, Absolutely. I don't think yeah. anyone yeah. would, and, and you I don't deserve you. any of that. I mean, I don't care what faith or religion you are, you deserve to be respected Absolutely. and loved and, loved. and you can hate someone and yeah. still respect them. Yep. So Exactly. Exactly. I agree. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, you are incredible. I could talk to you all day. <laughs> now, you're not only the most incredible therapist with such empathy for people, which I believe your whole childhood was preparing you for. Hey, how yeah. good is that? Now I can. Yeah. I got the no. gold star that I didn't want, but yeah, no. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but you're also in the fashion arena as well. Yeah. Oh, uh, can you tell? <laughs> You're incredible. Okay, so now I know that you also bring mental health awareness into yes. that sphere. Can you talk to us a little bit more about how that looks? I started writing captions, like if I had a modeling photo, I wouldn't just be like sitting here looking pretty. You know, I would put a caption about um, raising awareness for abuse, or I would put a caption um, about like your value doesn't come from other people. Here are four steps on love us how to accomplish that and da, 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 da. and then people started responding and I was like wait a minute second so like just intertwine like all of these things um and people just kept responding and so thankfully now 
on my Instagram. I can't believe it, but now I've built this community uh, with the help of, you know, my it's followers so where we do talk about mental health and it's so sweet. So cool. There have been times where I've been scared to share things, um, but I was like, I felt led to. Um, and one of them was my divorce. Yeah. <laughs> and at first I was very afraid to, to go on Instagram. I was dealing with a lot of grief and loss and a lot of uh, what you have to do to heal from that kind of abusive relationship. Yeah. And I remember just talking about this on Instagram, I, guys, I'm praying. I'm like trying to seek separation or divorce. I don't know what to do. And I kept asking God for like a, a word. And so he gave me that word and it talks about how, um, the husband is supposed to treat his wife like a precious garment. And if you know anything about the Bible, precious garments were very hard and very expensive to come by in that time. That's right. Well, right after that word and right after the restraining order and you know, the, the divorce was signed and then the restraining order happened, God got quiet. (laughs) Hmm. And I remember going on Instagram stories and being like crying, like full on mm-hmm. crying and being like, this sucks. Like, I don't, I don't know what I did wrong. Like, I'm, I don't know if I like whatever, but this is like my process. Right. And then I remember scrolling on Instagram because <laughs> God's God will use whatever avenue to oh, speak to he does. Music, car sign, billboard, whatever it'll happen. And, um, I remember scrolling Instagram one night when I was like really depressed and one of the little captions that somebody had posted just a blank little caption of said, uh, the teacher is quiet during a test. Mm. And as soon as I read that, it like hit me and I like bawled and I was like, yeah. Yeah. And he was wanting me to trust him that he would provide for everything because I was on the verge of going homeless and all this other stuff because I'd taken over the lease. I had taken over the bills and didn't go after him for anything because I knew it wasn't he wasn't gonna do anything. Yeah, yeah. And so I documented that on Instagram saying wow. like God spoke to me. And then fast forward to now where people have seen me, you know, the divorce is finalized and, you know, uh, got out of that relationship and I didn't go homeless and, uh, talked about doing a business and all that kind of stuff. And people, um, it's been really sweet because then they started seeing me be in a new relationship and they're like, oh my God, I remember you posting about like how bad oh. things were. And I've followed you since then. And your process of like how you advocate for people and like that it's not okay to be abused. They're like, uh, we've just seen you. Like, yeah. I feel like I've watched you come out of a fire. And literally. I'm like, that's what it was. <laughs> literally, literally, it's so inspiring. So, yeah. So a voice for the voiceless, you know? Yeah, and it was also beautiful too, because some of... Because I did that, there were some people that weren't talking to people about like if they were going, like I know two people who were going, they opened up to me because I posted and two of my girlfriends actually wrote me and they're like, hey, by the way, like you don't know this, but I'm in an abusive relationship too and I don't know what to do. Wow. Um, And I just remember being like, whoa, you know, and I I would tell them, I'm like, I don't control your relationship. I'm not telling you to, to leave or not leave but I'm wondering what you want and how can you seek safety? Can I help you get a therapist? Can I help yeah. you? And they ended up wow. leaving the the wow. person and they're so much happier now. And um, just to hear the stories from other people, you know, like when I posted about my <laughs> divorce papers being finalized, I was like, yes, yes. 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 <laughs> and everybody just like, I got like 20 messages they celebrated. Like, so yeah. Happy. Yeah. They, they were celebrating you. with me and they were like, Hey, I left a abusive relationship 14 years ago. And I married like the love of my life after and like mm. blah, blah, blah. And so it was just beautiful that random people I haven't even like met, um, share so those incredible. kind of things. So it's so incredible. What happened? I love it. So. I absolutely love it. I think yeah. even just for those who have, um, you know, who are navigating their own trauma, I think um, be brave and be vulnerable and share your story with your people, yeah. you know, because you've got no idea the ripple effect of what that's going to do. But what that mm-hmm. what it actually does as well is by letting people in, it actually almost catapults your own healing in a weird yeah. way. It I did. Don't it did. It just, it right. makes you feel not alone. And then yes. it makes you realize that, you know, cause people would be like, Oh, well, you're a therapist. Like, but you know, they would ask me like these general questions of like, Hey, did you not see like warning signs? And, da, da, da. and I said, Oh, 
Some people don't. I can give you yeah. plenty of research that shows that narcissism doesn't come out until years and years later. That's right. You know, and yeah. so some of it was like a psychoeducation piece, but also there's so many resources. Like I have um, like a, a little stack of books that I always recommend to people who are going through trauma. One of them I have is called The Body Keeps the Score, but I don't know where that is right now. I think I might have let someone... <laughs> Borrow it, I I'm sure. It, but I don't know if they'll give it back, but um, that's a good book. There's also a book called um, Attached is another good book. And it has like this red covering. And that book is really good about discussing like how we attach to others yep, based on great. our childhood experiences. Okay. And whether you had an awesome childhood or you had a bad one, which most of us have unfortunately had a bad one attachment styles are so huge because for instance my dad wasn't really present emotionally a lot of the life a lot of my younger life right but because I saw the dynamics between my mom and dad growing up and the domestic violence I was able to get out a lot quicker had I had not seen that I might have been one of the women that do stay out of whatever reason because there's a lot of women there's a lot of men because domestic abuse can happen to men too yeah It, it can it can happen and there's so many reasons why people stay. And if you stay, sometimes there's able to be different situations to keep that person protected. But for me, I just knew it wasn't healthy. So I would recommend that because attachment styles has a lot uh, to do with how we play out in friendships, how we date later on in life, um, your worth and your value, how that gets attached. Um, There's another book that actually a precious follower on Instagram she messaged me when I was like going through um, my divorce and she's like, I know this is going to sound weird, but the Holy Spirit told me to come to your profile oh, and send you a message. Wow. And I was like, what? And she's like, I recommend this book for you. Don't know why, but I recommend this book. And I was like, okay. And it's this book called Addiction and Grace, Love and Spirituality in the Healing of Addictions hmm. by Gerald G. May. Um, as you can tell, I've like really highlight- I've highlighted and trying it apart. And what I liked about this book is it's the first book that talks really, really, really well about addiction and spirituality, like how it shows Mm. up. So it made, it helped me understand what was going on with him because I knew that he was dealing with unresolved trauma. We tried to do couples counseling. I paid for an individual. He just refused to. So this book helped me understand that like addictions sometimes are so embedded yeah, in the wow. spirit and that yeah. it's so deeply embedded that it's very scary and very traumatic for them yeah. to even try to heal from it right. because they're so used to that pattern. Yeah. But then they have to choose, <clears throat> do you want to stay in that pattern or do you want to break free and like have the fulfilling life that you're you know called to? Yeah. So that book was written really well. It wasn't judgy or anything like that. This one was hilarious. <laughs> This one's called The Christian Chick's Guide to Surviving excuse me, <clears throat> to Surviving Divorce. It says what your girlfriends would tell you if they knew what to say. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I read this book the entire way and wow. the author does talk about her own um abusive situation and her own marriage ending. Wow. And she just spends each chapter you know, reading things. And I just remember like, I I read through this and I didn't feel any guilt, any shame. Mm. It was exactly like what I needed. And then there was a couple things because a lot of my healing process is like, why does somebody like that that's abusive doesn't pay for what Mm. they did? Mm. I took over everything (laughs) and I was paying for everything because of it. And he just went on and unfortunately found a new target and, and that kind of thing. But I was like, well, why doesn't he pay for it? God, why doesn't he pay or suffer any of this? Like I had to, you know, go through all this, but the book helped me realize like, no, they're going to have to answer to what they did to you. hundred percent. They're going to not just go from being a horrible person to an amazing person with the next person. Narcissism can't just change overnight. That's right. You know, it's, it's one of those things that, oh yeah, they can show that they're, that they're happy and whatever. And I didn't want them back, but I, feared for that girl yeah and I feared and I was like oh my god she has kids he's Mm. going to eventually be abusive 
Yeah. And I just remember processing that with my therapist. And I was like, I know it sounds stupid. Like, I don't want him back. I don't want anything. But like, I'm actually scared for her and her kids Mm -hmm. because I've seen what's happened. Like, I still have proof of everything. And my therapist was like, not your problem. Yeah. Wow. But a part of healing from traumatic stuff is sometimes you have to, and I've talked a lot about this with clients recently and they're like, but sometimes when you go through traumatic experiences, there's no closure. Yeah. And you have to, especially if there's been, you know, injustice done to you. And sometimes the hardest part of trauma healing is creating your own closure. You know, I'm never going to get that, you know, half of the divorce filing that I, he was supposed to give me, I'm never going to get an a sorry, you know, and I had to come to terms with the anger that would rise up on that. Of course. Like, how can you do this? Like, how can, like, how does he not suffer God? Like what? I don't want to. No remorse. Yeah. And it's like, what? And now you're going to do the same thing to this girl, the next girl, the next girl, the next girl. And I just remember being like, why doesn't this pay? And then just reading Mm. this book was just really good about, no, they will pay. They will. And that they left you a long time ago. Yeah. You know, this was not your fault. This was not. So she wrote very beautifully. I thought it was really good. Another one I will say, these last two, um, Psychopath Free. Okay. This one I recommend for anyone that is in a narcissistic or uh, just any kind of abusive where someone's just manipulating you a lot. Um, I just was looking up in this Facebook group, um, thrive after abuse is what it's called. And the psychopath free, it says recovering from emotionally abusive relationships with narcissists, sociopaths, and other toxic people. Hmm. This book really opens the eyes for people who have been through some kind of abuse or, or trauma, because sometimes it's not your fault. You know, a lot of the times, right? It's not your fault what happened to you. Yeah. But this book helped me realize that with like his narcissism and like different things that it wasn't like my fault. You can love somebody like crazy and it so not cover their addiction. Yeah. You you can do all you can. And I did. I went above and beyond. My therapist was like, you did more than you needed to. Yeah. Um, yeah. But at the same time, like sometimes you don't understand like psychologically, why are they doing this? Psychologically, why was I pegged? Right? Like, why was I chosen as their target? Mm-hmm. And it goes into saying like psychopaths and narcissists and people that are toxic sometimes like to grab on to people who have a light who have an empathy mm-hmm. because you have something that they can't have, right, you know, right. they can, they're scared of that vulnerability. They're scared of that true love. They're Makes scared sense. of all of that because they're not in love with themselves. How, yeah. how are they going to love you? They exactly. haven't healed from their past traumas. Yeah. So they're going to take it out on you. Yeah. And so this book just went into just so many Powerful. ways of like how to heal from that. What do you do? Okay. What's gaslighting? Um, so it goes over just a lot of basic stuff and it was a, easy read. It wasn't too hard to read. And I highlighted yeah. like a lot. <laughs> That's, good. That's good. And then the last one is just uh, processing through grief. And it says guided exercise to understand your emotions and recover from loss. So this one is like, if people like to journal, um, right. so you can like journal in like certain pages. I haven't gone through it all yet, but yep. you can just kind of journal in certain pages. Yep. So yeah, some people love that interactive um, type yeah. of book. So that's brilliant. And if anybody needs these, as you listen later, um, I have them on my Instagram. Like my link in my bio has okay, like Amazon perfect. favorites. That's great. And I put books in there. Okay, fantastic. I'll make sure that we've got, I've got access to that link. So I'll grab that off you. Amazing. Jennifer, thank you so much for your time. Honestly, I, I feel like this is a video that people are going to want to rewatch because there's just so much. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't feel alone and it's okay not to be okay. Yes. (laughs) Love it. I got this gift from a company. I love it. It's so Everywhere great. I wear it, like, people are like, yes. Yes, so. I love it. I love it. Well, thank Which you so true. much, sweetheart. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I hope this helps anyone, male or female, that has, has been through any kind of trauma or abusive relationship more than anything. Know that you're not alone. And no matter what uh, trauma or abuse that you've gone through, it doesn't define you unless you let it. And there is ways to break free and have that freedom. So... 
Hey guys, I realized that today's topic was pretty full on. However, if you have been impacted by anything that we have covered today, please know this. There are resources that are readily available to help you navigate whatever trauma it is that you might be dealing with. If at any point in time you want to reach out to Jennifer and find out a little bit more about her therapy sessions, or if you want to lock in a free 30-minute discovery session with me and find out about my life coaching program, then those details are up for you as we speak. I'll close with this. You do not have to live the rest of your life carrying trauma from the past. It is possible to heal. All right. I love you. I'll talk to you soon.